Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Again, we're in a grace period. Five is grace in biblical numerics, and that fifth trumpet is sounding right now. The woe of the fifth trumpet is what we're talking about in this book of Joel. That's when Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven unto the earth, and that one world political system emerges, and the first stage of the locust army begins at that time. The gnar, followed by the swarmer, then the devourer, and then the deadly wound to the one world political system, after which Satan appears as the false Christ, and that begins the fourth and final stage of the locust army, the consumer stage, and immediately after the five-month-long hour of temptation, immediately after after the tribulation of those days, as it's written in Matthew chapter 24, the true Christ returns, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, upon the nations, that is to say, a great people and a strong there hath not been ever the like. These aren't humans. These are the fallen angels we're talking about here. Neither shall be any more after it. They will be destroyed at the seventh trumpet, as you can read of in Revelation chapter 11 in that earthquake, even to the years of many generations. They're destroyed forever and ever. Satan himself will be locked up in the bottomless pit. After the thousand years are finished, he'll be released for a short season, and then he'll be destroyed as well in the lake of fire. A fire devoureth before them. Again, Revelation chapter 9, the fire, smoke, and brimstone. Remember, this is an army of deception, and they don't kill people physically. And behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, speaking of the spiritual death. Remember what happened to Adam and Eve. They died spiritually when they worshiped the devil. Yea, and nothing shall escape them, except for those with the seal of God in their forehead. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run, as it's written in Revelation chapter 9 and verse 9, and they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron, being part of Daniel's fourth beast, which is exclusively supernatural, the one that had the great iron teeth, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses, running to battle, speaking of those highly polished spectrum metal vehicles that they travel in even. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. What sort of chariots are on the tops of mountains? You're talking about flying vehicles here. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. And the devourer is one of those stages of the locust, the third stage of the locust, which transpires just before the fourth and final stage of the locust, the consumer stage, where you can see horsemen written of there as well in Revelation chapter 9, where it says, The number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them in Revelation chapter 9 verse 16. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, as it reads in Joel chapter 2 verse 4, and as horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. This is the deception, not literally, but deception is what we're talking about here. Figuratively speaking, a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They've never seen supernatural entities on the earth before. They're going to be in shock, men's hearts failing them for the things that are coming upon the earth, as Christ said in Luke 21, to paraphrase. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. They're all of one accord. They all follow Satan. Satan is their leader, the king of the locusts. As we know from Revelation 9:11. they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. That's Satan, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, which means destroyer, but in the Greek tongue hath this name Apollyon, which also means 
destroyer. He destroys the souls of those who have not the truth of God's word in their forehead, in their mind, that is to say. Those who didn't love our Father enough to study his word chapter by chapter and verse by verse will be deceived by Satan and his locust army, period. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Now, if a flesh man falls upon a sword, he's going to be wounded. So what this is telling you is these aren't humans. These are Satan's angels, the fallen angels. They're not human. They look like they're human, but they're not. They're supernatural. They shall run to and fro in the city, Jerusalem, that is to say, is their headquarters. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Through people's electronics, they'll be seen throughout the world. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now we're talking about the seventh trumpet, when the locust army is destroyed, as you can read of in Revelation chapter 11. And the same hour was there a great earthquake. We're in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 13. At the end of the hour of temptation, the five months, the term of the locust, was a great earthquake. When the true Christ returns, and the tenth part of the city fell... And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. This is the destruction of those fallen angels. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. So that's why it says, The earth shall quake before them. And then it says, The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining because of the return of the true Christ. He outshines the light of the sun, moon, and stars. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, the armies of heaven, and return with Christ, for his camp is very great, and he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord, the millennium, the thousand years that begin when Christ returns, when the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet, is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Those with the seal of God in their forehead. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, this is talking about right now, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, fasting from the wickedness of this world, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, turn unto the true Christ, and stay there, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. He's not mad at those who love him. He's not going to pour out those vials of his wrath and indignation upon those that loved him enough to study his word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, whereby they obtain that seal of God in their forehead and aren't deceived into receiving the mark of the beast, which is the deception, whenever Satan appears as the false Christ. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? And so he shall to those that are faithful to him and remain virgin bride, spiritually speaking, rather than becoming part of the whore of Babylon. They will get the wrath if they don't snap out of it between the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet, and they need to get their act together during the millennium, or else they're going to be blotted out in the lake of fire. But it's not God's will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. That's why he took the time to write us this word. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast from this wicked world. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breasts, those that are deceived into nursing along Satan's work, pull them out of the deception if you can by planting seeds of truth. Blow the trumpet. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. It's not time to get married yet. The true husband isn't here yet, in other words. That's the warning that there is a deception coming before the true Christ returns. That's the warning. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. And this has to do with the curse of Deuteronomy 28, which leads up to that five-month period with that nation of fierce countenance. Remember what nation means? 
flight of locusts and that king of fierce countenance that you can read of in Daniel 8 is the king of Babylon of the end time, Satan. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. Remember in Isaiah 14, Satan said he would sit in the sides of the north and exalt himself above the stars of heaven and will drive him, Satan that is to say, into a land barren and desolate. This is speaking of the bottomless pit with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uttermost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. He spake those great things and blasphemies claiming to be Christ's return. And those who weren't familiar enough with our Father's word to have that seal of God in their forehead believed it and were deceived and died spiritually. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. Again, translate this as earth. Fear not, O earth, because it's global. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. The parable of the fig tree will be fulfilled upon the return of the true Christ. That's when those good figs are separated from the bad figs at the seventh trumpet, because the harvest is the end of the world. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. This is speaking of the truth. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain, In the first month, the truth of our Father's word, whereby you're not deceived, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. God is in control of the locust army. He gave them orders not to touch those with the seal of God in their forehead, and they can't, because it's an army of deception. And ye shall eat in plenty, we're speaking spiritually here, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dwelt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. The only ones that are going to be ashamed are those that understand that they've been worshiping the false Christ at the seventh trumpet when all are changed into spiritual bodies, and they want the mountains and rocks to fall on them and cover them, to hide them from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Those are the ones that are ashamed of themselves at that time, but not God's people, not those that love our Heavenly Father. And if you loved him, you would get into his word and understand it to the best of your ability. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, not Satan or anybody else, but our Heavenly Father. And my people shall never be ashamed. Again, twice for emphasis. Those who love our Father shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. This is the Holy Spirit, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, during that five-month-long hour of temptation, will I pour out my Spirit. This is when God's elect will be delivered up, at which time the Holy Spirit will speak through them. And this was quoted by Peter in Acts chapter 2, where you had a perfect example of that. What was said by the Holy Spirit through the twelve apostles was understood by whoever heard it, no matter what what language they spoke, and only God can do that, and that's what's going to happen whenever God's elect are delivered up to Satan, the Antichrist, during the sixth trumpet. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Before the seventh trumpet, whenever the thousand-year-long day of the Lord begins, the sixth trumpet sounds, which is also the sixth seal and the sixth vial, and in the sixth seal, you see the sun become black as sackcloth and the moon turn into blood, which is an imitation of the coming of the true Christ. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, the true Christ, that is to say. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. In other words, the elect will be delivered up to Jerusalem, and the Holy Spirit will speak through them, and it will be transmitted throughout the world, and many will come out of the confusion at that time.